So this is going to be the final part of the soccer ball trophy series. Um, I'm going to mainly focus on building the second ball because as I mentioned in the last video, I wanted to try another one with the second version of the jig I made because it was really simple and easy to make. And as I said in the last video, I was right. This one turned out much better. I think I see like maybe two hairline cracks in this one. The last pentagon I put in kind of protrudes a little bit, but that doesn't really matter because I'm going to be sanding this down. So this turned out really well. It's a little bit smaller than the original, which I'll talk about in the video. Now I am, this is kind of the abstracted base I came up with for the first trophy. Um, full disclosure, I'm probably not going to keep this. These trophies go to a coach that coaches um, a girls soccer team and the girls are younger, um, not, not little kids, but they are younger. And I just, as much as, I don't dislike this form per se, but um, I just don't think it fits the age group of the kids that are getting it. I don't know if they would be totally thrilled seeing something like this. So I'm probably gonna scrap that and go back to a more traditional style base for both of these. Um, I won't be able to fit it into this video because I'm posting it tomorrow, but if I remember, I'll post a photo on my Instagram of that updated version. I also made one of these, like I said, a couple years ago, and some of you actually went back and watched that video, and I'll try and remember to post a video of that in this one because that's pretty much the style I'm going for. And that way I could use the team colors um, in the design as well. But like I said, the main part of this video was, was figuring out how to get this ball made solidly. And um, I'm pretty happy with how both of these turned out. And um, I'm not one for spoilers, but the next series I'm pretty excited about. If you watch the channel, you've seen bits and pieces of this trestle table kicking around the shop for well over a year. And um, I'm finally finishing it up and delivering it. So that will be a pretty long series that starts off next week after the, the soccer balls. So this is that first ball before sanding with all the blue tape off. And I was pleasantly surprised with how this turned out considering not all of my shapes were perfect and I knew that going into it. So I'm able to clamp this in my vise. This is the vise I got after making um, someone, bartering with someone for a toboggan. And this vise has been invaluable in the shop because it can hold larger forms like this. So I'm just gonna go through and knock down the bulk of the material with an abrasive metal disc on my angle grinder. You can see I'm just kind of taking down the edges at this point and I could hold it between those two hexagons on the sides pretty easily. So I could remove about 80% of the material with the angle grinder. Um, this leaves a pretty rough cut and this is plywood so this stuff does like to chip off pretty easily. And then um, I would go through with a belt sander and kind of start to smooth it over. Now I know that you can turn these on a lathe. Um, I don't know how well that would turn out with plywood, but I just don't have the jigs in order to turn uh, spheres on, on the lathe, and I wasn't did, didn't really have the time to make them for this. So this worked well. Um, down the line, if I make more of these, I might invest the time to make those jigs for the lathe, lathe because um, turning these into circles would be a lot easier. This did work. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, but you can see this it's not it wasn't terribly time consuming the bulk of this work was done in less than an hour and then i moved over i was using a, a roll of tape to kind of hoist this up and i was using an orbital sander to then smooth this over i think at this point i'm still using 80 grit you could see what i'm doing is i'm getting over the side of it and finding the arch where there's bumps which i'm pointing out with my fingers I would knock those down and that's kind of how you could tell pretty quickly if it's smooth. So this is one side that I sanded over and then you could see this is one that I haven't done yet. And it was just a matter of going through sanding. I went back to the um, the vise because it worked a little bit easier. It held it in place pretty well. So then I wanted to do this again because I am making two of these. I found this pattern online. It's actually for someone who makes felt soccer balls. You could see the, the um, address there if you want to copy this. They're a little bit smaller than the original, which is why the second ball turned out smaller. But I assumed that um, I could still cut these the way I had before and it would turn out. 
So I, I was doing the same exact process, only this time I'm using three quarter inch ply. Um, and I just taped that onto my piece and then, and then went from there and, and used the sander to sand it down. I didn't show this fully in the original video. This is the jig I have. I made this a while back, this, this sliding T-track that sits on top of my fence. So all I did was take a three quarter inch piece of plywood, tack two half inch pieces of plywood on it in order to get it so that my jig on top rides against the fence and the piece I'm cutting rides below it. And then I could screw it all to that T-track I have on my fence. It was really simple, it took about five minutes. Um, I could set the blade. You could see this is a couple of test cuts. Um, I did about three in order to get it perfect and this is what you're looking for, the two edges to line up and then I could run all of my pieces through. If I would use this process again I might take some time to make a little nicer version of this jig but this worked fine for what it is. And then with this one I just have two brads going through. I could hammer that piece on top pry it off afterwards and then re reuse that. At this point I had mostly sand down the original and the brad marks from the, from the first jig pretty much came all off. So you can see I could just pry these pieces apart and then reuse that. So this is already glued and taped together. I didn't show it again because it was already in the first one and I was really happy with how this one lined up. There was really no, no um, odd spots and that pentagram, a pentagon fits in there, fits in there very easily. So I once again did not show gluing that all together because that was in the first video. So then I had this piece of a Rosa Sharon that someone gave me, it's a trunk. Now um, I was modeling this abstractly off of the actual World Cup trophy, which has a figure holding up the ball, but it looks like there's almost three arches that hold it up. Now I'm not a very figurative person, so I wanted to abstract this a little bit to get that same sort of form with this concept of these three fingers holding up the ball. It turned out basically how I wanted it to using a series of tools. Um, if you've watched the channel before, this is pretty par for the course for me. You mostly use a, um, a chainsaw to rough everything out, then the angle grinder to rough it out a little bit more and then I, I move over to a series of bits that fit in the die grinder and the Dremel. Um, like I said this turned out pretty much essentially how I wanted it to. I just I don't think it's it's super well suited for, for a kid's trophy. So I might turn this into firewood. I might keep it for something else. We'll see. But um, the chainsaw did the bulk of, of removing this inner material so that I had this nice um, negative space on the inside of it and these kind of almost flame-like structures holding up that ball. It fit in there quite well and this was only about an afternoon's worth of work but with woodworking a lot of times these videos always show the final project without a lot of the the headache but sometimes if you work on something it's it, it can be hard to decide not to use it but I think it's going to be the best choice in, in this in this matter. So you can see I'm just going through and fitting that ball onto the top there. And this ball at this point was pretty, pretty well um, formed. I don't show it, but I did fill some of the gaps with some epoxy and, and that really filled the, the few hairline cracks that I did have in there. And as you can see the fit I did get on this was, was pretty good. And this, the other reason I'm, I'm scrapping this because I don't have the bit in order to smooth it out. So wherever my orbital sander couldn't, couldn't fit, I'd have to get a bit to finish it off. Um, this, like I promised, is, is more of the style I'm going for. This was the original trophy. This is not narcissistic. Um, the trophy that I made, that the ball lit up and everything, but the trophy I made that original one for, the girl's nickname on the team was the Honey Badger, so that's why that was on there. And I used the hollow form in the first one because there's a flashlight going through the bottom there. And, and like I said, this one did actually light up and it, it, there's some painted elements. So these are the two new ones side by side. That This one's smaller just because, like I said, the pattern I used was, was smaller. Cut it at the same angles and, and this is the other one. You could see that when it's, when it's wet it's going to look pretty cool and I'll probably paint these pentagons um, a team color or something like that. <laughs> 